Hey, what's up guys? My name is Samuel Leeds. Welcome back to Q&A Sunday. This week, I'm gonna be answering your property investment questions. So if you've got a question around property, whether it be around HMOs, lease option agreements, rent to rent, packaging, selling deals, structuring a joint venture agreement, what to look for in a property or anything at all. If you're thinking about buying a house or you're working out, or you're trying to work out, is it a good deal? Is it a bad deal? Post the details below in the comment box and I'll do my very best to answer your property investment questions on my next Q&A Sunday video. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna be answering a few questions. I'm gonna pick five top questions from last week's Q&A Sunday video and I'm gonna be answering those right here, right now. Now, in order for me to answer your question, you do need to be a subscriber. So you know what, do me a massive favor and do yourself a favor and subscribe to the channel. I'm almost on 200,000 subscribers. I think we're on like almost basically 199. So let's try and get that to the 200,000 mark. I literally put a YouTube video out every single day and have been doing so for years. And uh, I do that to try and help people and give back to the property community. So go and hit subscribe, smash the like, button, share the positivity and the love, and drop your comment or question below, and I'll do my best to answer. So what we got? So we've got a guy called Mefruz Raham said, Hi Samuel, I just wanted to know, what would you do in my position? Would you start investing into property before having an emergency fund? Or should you trust the investment to go well? That's a really good question. And I'm gonna answer that question in two parts. I'm gonna, number one, I'm gonna tell you what I would advise or what most people would tell you is the right thing to do. And then I'm gonna tell you what I did, okay? So what most people would say, and you know, if I was putting my sensible hat on, you'd say, of course, have an emergency fund. Because if you invest all your money into property and you haven't got any cash in the bank, you've not got any cushion, any oxygen, because money is oxygen. Money just makes things happen. Um, and you invest it all into property and you stretch yourself, then should an emergency happen, maybe you might have something break in your house or you might need an operation you have to pay for, you are overstretched, over leveraged, and you can't afford to do it. So get your emergency fund sorted, make sure you've got a, a little bit of cushion, a few thousand pounds in the bank, and then invest what's left into property. That's probably what most people advise you to do. That is, however, not what I did myself, and that's also not what most people that I know who are succeeding have, have done when they start out. Most property investors, most business entrepreneurs, they put everything on the line. I did that. I was so stretched. I remember driving as, at about 18 years old. I remember driving uh, in my little Ford purple KA and my car was so low on petrol, but I was like, I can't afford to get petrol because I got no money in the bank. I'm overdrawn. My credit cards are overdrawn. And I, th I remember thinking, I'm just gonna have to make, I, I need to get home and wait for some rent to come in because I've got a few properties on rent now. So I'm driving and guess what? My car broke down. I'm pushing my little Ford bumped purple KA to the nearest petrol station in the rain. I get to the petrol station. I put five pounds in because I can't afford any more than five pounds. Just enough to get me home. And I get to pay for the five pounds and my card is declining because my credit card and my overdraft is maxed out. I have to phone my little sister who's four years younger than me, who's like 15 years old, and beg her to transfer five pounds to my account so I can afford to put some money in my car to get home. That, that was me. And at the time, I was buying houses. I had quite a few houses at that time. So for me to stand here and say to you, be sensible. You know what? If you wanna be ridiculously successful in this business, you can't be sensible. You have to be a little bit crazy. You have to be prepared to do things most of us do. So I couldn't advise you to do what I did because some people would have a nervous breakdown. But that's what I did. So I hope that helps answer your question. Another thing is most people say, I'll make a nice salary, I'll save some money, and then I'll invest what's left over. Guess what's gonna be left over? Nothing! So you're better off to invest what you can't afford to invest, because at least then it's invested. And then you'll be broke. Good, 
You'll be broke, but you'll be invested. And then your rent comes in and the properties appreciate. I just had some of my houses valued that I bought back in those days. I remember buying a house when I was a teenager. I just had it valued this week. And I'm like, man, it's, it's almost tripled in value. Gone up, doubled, and then tripled in value. And I get like a thousand pound a month rent off of it. Not rent, cash flow profit. So, so glad that I stretched myself 10, 12, 13 years ago, because now I'm reaping the rewards. Because I did what most people weren't prepared to do, now I'm prepared to live how most people can't live. So, I hope that helps. All right, next, MS says, hey Samuel, awesome to see you're almost at 200,000 subscribers. I'm so excited. I'm like refreshing it every day, hoping that another thousand people will subscribe. So pass this channel around to your friends. I've been on your Q&A since 2019, but have not started in property. I hope to start soon. Dude, man, you just have to do it. Most people live their whole life putting their foot on the accelerator, but also their foot on the brake. Because they want to be, everyone wants to be comfortable. Everyone wants to be safe. Listen, every property investment is going to take some risk. Everything you do is risky. Having a job is risky. Investing in property is risky. Leaving the house is risky. Staying at home is risky. Like, life's this risky. None of us are going to get out alive. So, just start. Pull the trigger. Anyway, that wasn't his question. <laughs> you haven't even got your question. I'm already giving you advice. I hope so. My question this week is, when viewing a possible deal, what are the top five things we should always make sure of in terms of due diligence? Also excited to meet you in December. I'm excited to meet you in December too. What are the things to look for, the top five things? Okay, number one, location. Location's really important. If you're buying a property, you need to make sure that the area is not a terrible area where you'll get stabbed on the viewing. You don't want boarded up windows, pimps and hoes in the street. You don't want that but you also don't want really nice, beautiful, all developed, because then there's no room for generation and improvement. So I tend to go like three, four out of 10. Uh, also location, I like the outskirts of towns where I can see that the return's good. So location's really important. Um, second thing is return on investment. I mean, this is just mega. You need to be able to, you need to work out the numbers. So what's the return on investment? I like to make sure that the return on investment is always a minimum of 15%. Um, third thing in terms of due diligence would be maybe check um, the actual house itself for structural issues. Get a survey on the property. Make sure that there's no rising damp, there's no mine shafts underneath the property. Um, survey. Uh, number four for due diligence would be uh, what demographic kind of tenants are you going to get? Um, you know, who's going to manage the property? Uh, who are you going to be putting in? And then number five for due diligence is can you add value? I'll be looking at how much value. So if I buy the property as it is today, that's fine. That's one thing. But what can I do to the property that's going to add value? What, how can I um, push the value up? I like to buy the, the worst house on the best street. I don't mean the best street in, 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 in the world. I mean, I'm going to find a street that's kind of average and I'm going to buy a property that's the worst on the street because sometimes people buy houses that have got ceiling prices. So they'll buy a house for, I don't know, 150,000 pounds. It's a little bit shabby. But even if you do it up and you spend 50,000 on it, it's never gonna be more than 200,000 pounds. So I like to buy a house in the street where there's other houses selling for three, 400,000 and I've got mine for 150. So there's not, the ceiling price is not too low. So, I mean, listen, there's a whole bunch of things. There's so many rules. And if you're coming in December to the training, it's gonna blow your mind. Anyway, what we got next? We got my man Rahaba says, Samuel, I'm 19. I'm currently working for people with learning disabilities and I earn £9.81 per hour. How can I start a property business? I've watched your journey since I was 18 and, I, and it grew my passion for property business. How can I join your workshop to learn more and be financially independent? Much love, you're my motivation. Uh, firstly, hey, I appreciate the support and I'm glad you've been enjoying the, the YouTube channel. Here's this. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter where you've been. One thing matters, and that is where you're going. When you, uh, when, yeah, of course you can come on the training. It's free. Come meet me. It'd be amazing. But what you'll find is, when you come on the training, there'll be a, a solicitor and a doctor and a man that's just been made redundant next to a woman that's been made retire, uh, retired next to a, a university student next to a pregnant lady or a lady that's on maternity that doesn't want to go back to work. Like, every, there's an equal playing field. Everyone's from different backgrounds, different financial statuses, but it doesn't matter. 
where you've been or where you are. It matters where you're going. So, can you become successful in property? Absolutely, absolutely. Next question, Joe Stokes. Hi Samuel, what do you spend your money on? What do I spend my money on? I spend my money on holidays, I spend my money on um, in, uh, investing in myself, on mentors, coaches, experiences. I like to spend my money on experiences. I'm not really too worried about clothes or material things. It's more about learning, experiencing. So uh, yeah, hotels. We're going to. I'm going to Dubai next month with my beautiful wife. We're going to be staying in the Burj Al Arab, which is not a, a four-star hotel. It's not a five-star hotel. It's not a six-star ho hotel. It's a seven-star. I mean, I didn't even know that existed. So we're going to, you know, I, I just, I just like experiences. So that's what I like to spend my money on. All right, last question. Um, Kaja Samir Mahoudin Mohammed said, I really like your videos. I'd like to start my property journey, but I don't know much about it. I would like to invest 50,000 pounds. I'm looking for any joint venture partnership. Kindly help me or any suggestions where I could invest my money and get some profit in property market. Okay, so um, Kaja, first thing I'll say is, I wouldn't invest your 50,000 pounds when you don't have a clue what you're doing because it will go so much further if you actually know what you're doing. The biggest thing you can do to begin with is to invest a little bit of money or time into your education because the more you learn, the more you earn, as cheesy as it sounds. 50,000 pounds, if you spend 50,000 pounds on property investment but you don't know what you're doing, number one, you could lose the money. You could mess it up. Number two, you could make money off of it, but not make as much money as you could have done if you just spent 1,000 pounds investing in yourself. 49,000 pounds will go a lot further than 50,000 pounds if in the hands of the man that spent 1,000 pounds investing in himself first. Think about that, maybe play that back. Anyway, folks, I'm looking forward to seeing your questions. Comment below, any questions at all, I'll do my best to answer. And um, I look forward to seeing you in person. Come down to a crash course, man. Come down to one of our live training programs. I'll leave a link in the description and see you soon. Peace out, God bless.